Okay, welcome back to the next Upgrade Center video. So the first two that are out there was Kirsten's Upgrading V1 and then my Enterprise Manager. And it's important to do these in the right sequence here. So start with those. And what we're going to do now is go into a BNR server upgrade and then the components and agents. So um, to get your ISO, your download, the installable, when you log in, you just click on downloads up here and then you'll go down and um, I've been getting the advanced bundle here because I know that these two are packaged in uh, or if you just need BNR you can get that. So let's jump in the lab here. So this is a different environment and I've, you know, using a different couple of environments for, for a couple of reasons, but a couple of things. One, if you're using the Veeam hardened repository, make sure you have those uh, single use creden credentials handy uh, because you will have to re drop those in and make sure everything's online and disable jobs and watch the times. Now uh, let's start the, now one of the things I like to do is um, uh, just note the time. So I don't show time. That's a little lab trick. Uh, let me redo recordings and stuff. So I got 842 local time. So just to give you a sense of what time, uh, how long it's going to take. Okay. So let's get into it. So the first thing I'm going to do is check out the configuration backup. So if you're not doing this, please, please do. Uh, the configuration backup will be the first thing I do. And I am just going to the default, you know, uh, path locally. I am encrypting it. It has run successfully uh, just recently. So that's good. So let's check out what's in um, the config backup path. So here it is. And I can see that those are in there. The, uh, what, are the what is the file type? I actually don't remember. Uh, very BCO configuration backup, backup config. So those are there. All right. So I know my schedule all of these jobs, for example, I do them, they want to just run after another, okay? So e either disable your jobs or just, you know, I know that this won't take so long, so I'm going to just close. All right, and let's get into the ISO. So I have it here. Let's mount it. And let's do it. So when we do the upgrade, Ooh, razzle dazzle new installer, that's cute. So you'll see that, uh, first of all, it doesn't detect enterprise manager and on the other video we did that. So now we're just gonna upgrade BNR, backup and replication. Ah, theme backup shell. I know what's going on. There's probably someone else logged in. If you're like me, people doing that disconnect, she means well. But let's solve that. And am I on the right system? Yeah. That's interesting. I didn't think that was a terminal server, but uh, I guess I was disconnected, so it's okay. And Aaron. So yeah, that's... I mean, this is a lab, so I'm not checking with him, but that would be the right thing to do. So, and I know at this time of day, uh, for these people, they're not. So we'll just do this real quick. And throughout the video, I might pause it. Again, that's why it's important I noted the time just to keep the video short. So if we wait for something, I may pause it and then just come back. Okay, so let's accept the license agreement. There we go. So it is going to go from 11A to V12, the generally available 1420. Now, if you have 1402, that's the RTM update, and we'll need a patch for that. I will have that noted in the upgrade center. All right, now it did detect there is a license in there, which is good. 
Now definitely want to check this new thing out in the user guide that explains this, but the license reporting, the usage reporting, it actually gives you double grace if you were to go over, like suppose the number of instances, kind of an interesting benefit for that, but definitely check that out. And so far, you know, this upgrade wizard actually looks much like what Enterprise Manager did. So that's cool. Let's um, stick with the same account. Aha. So this is an upgrade. So it is going to be on SQL and it's going to upgrade the SQL. But you can see that's a drop down, but it's grayed out. If you're doing a new install, by default, it'll be Postgres. So uh, keep that in mind. Um, but you can also explicitly choose SQL. Okay. Now we get that same message about upgrading the actual database and we're going to check to see if this will work right. All right, it says it's ready to give it a shot. So here is one of the examples where with all the different steps up here, it may take some time. So I will probably pause the video and just come back to it as it goes. Um, it's going to just progress through these six parts, which include like the explorers and some of the storage plugins and things like that. Um, while that's going, one thing that comes to my mind is you're going to want to make sure that during the upgrade, you're not going to have like Windows updates co come in. So some people like to do that ahead of time. So that might be something or like pending restarts. I mean, I've not simulated that, but those are the types of things that might end up having you take more time to do the upgrade. So, um, uh, you know, updates are always a good idea for the OS anyways, but uh, we'll let this run here for a bit and I will, um, what I'm going to do is actually have the video paused, but I'll probably unpause it as it goes through the steps here, just so you can kind of follow along at home. Now, depending on what you have configuration wise, I don't know if you would have say more, like for example, I did a couple of the different enterprise manager systems and I had one that had one of two and then a different had one of three, right? So it just depends on what's going on, maybe how much it's been upgraded from other versions and things like that. So anyways, I'll just keep it going here, but um, we'll pause the video as it progresses. All right, so this is the last step here, and it's going to um, start some services. So it looks like it's almost ready. I guess one thing I'll do here, I'll just check the time here. So uh, we're at 8.56, so eh, moving pretty good. Uh, we'll come back and check that here in a bit. Now, one thing, uh, it does not look like it's going to need it here is a reboot. Um, in fact, one of my other environments I was working with, it, actually, I got a database problem because I've had this one since version, that, that other environment since version 7. So, but I'm convinced that there are some environments where the upgrade may require a reboot. So uh, even though this is an example, I would maybe just, if you're planning how long it may take, you know, add in time for something like that as well.
All right, successfully upgraded. So let's go, and we're not done yet. What I want to do is also show you, um, so that's good. I think I'm going to... Ah, it's funny, I've been using the multi-factor authentication on V12, and so I just out of habit, when I saw 12 there, I uh, reached for my phone for the MFA, but this environment hasn't been set up yet. That's funny. All right, now it should tell me I need to upgrade at least my proxy. Oh, there we go. So I have two proxies. Um, oh, no, I actually have a, these services on itself and then the proxy. So let's go ahead and do that. Now, this is kind of an interesting thing. Um, if you've ever done this before, it's like, you know, I've had scenarios where they're all on the same network, but they don't take anywhere near the same amount of time. Um, that always is intriguing to me. So this is just something that you want to make sure you have the time for it to succeed. But um, your mileage may vary uh, because it all will push from the BNR server. So that is probably one of the reasons why the time is varied. And then secondly, uh, this particular one's the BNR server, and that's just a proxy. So I suspect the bottom one will be done quicker. The one on the top is many roles and a proxy, right? So. Um, my guess is the bottom one will be done quicker. Even though it's a remote system, there's just less rolls on it. Oh, they're tied. Let's see. Well, the bottom one is more CPU, so maybe that'll be a factor. Well, oh, no, my guess was wrong. The remote system win, uh, loses again, so the local system has it. So, And uh, this should finish up here. Yeah, okay. So now we're at V12, and um, I'm going to do a, uh, you know, I could do a backup here, and I'll just do this last one. And the reason why I'm choosing this last one is because these all kind of like cascade after each other. You know, if one starts, they all go. I guess I could say no to that question. Um, but I'll just start with this one. And I know that this one only has one uh, VM in that folder. So that was the upgrade. And the job's underway here, so that's always good. So the completion time, at least for my environment, was 9.01 local time. So that was just under 20 minutes for me. Um, your mileage may vary, but, you know, I want to give you that as an option here, you know, and then if you want to add some things like running a job or if you want to jump right in to configuring some of the different new things, you know, like uh, multi-factor authentication, I do recommend you plan that out uh, ahead of time a bit. So if you, you know, maybe set up a lab environment so you know kind of explicitly what you want to do here. I can tell you I set up the multi-factor authentication incorrectly the first time. And it worked really good. Locked me out big time. So uh, keep that in mind. Uh, so you might want to set up a, just download a, the ISO and make a community edition, a free one, and then add your license and just play with MFA so that you know what you want to do before you go configuring up the production environment too far. Yeah, so the jobs are running now on V12 config. So awesome. So we'll get this video up on the upgrade center thanks for watching and let us know on the community hub if you got any comments on the video and what else you want to see added for the upgrade